I'm Karen Collins, registered dietitian, nutritionist, and nutrition advisor to the American Institute for Cancer Research. After a diagnosis of breast cancer, it can feel overwhelming to hear all the mixed messages there are, whether it's about soy, gluten, dairy products in your diet, or things outside of what you eat like hair dye and microwaves. The important thing to remember is that a single study can turn up just about anything. And often that when you look deeper, it involves um, simple things about the methodology or how the results were analyzed or what was chosen to report. One example would be soy. Many people are uh, concerned because they hear about isoflavones in soy, which are the phytocompounds, the natural plant compounds that have a chemical structure that's very similar to human estrogen. But earlier studies in which uh, isoflavones promoted the growth of estrogen receptor positive cancer in mice involved much higher levels in the blood than what humans would achieve by eating soy foods. Human population studies don't show a soy associated with uh, increased risk of any kind of cancer. And in fact, limited evidence from populations in Asia where they consume soy throughout their life shows potential for a lower risk of breast cancer. Although this research does suggest that, that to achieve this lower risk, it may involve that lifetime consumption, including during adolescence. After a diagnosis of breast cancer, soy is not associated with increased risk. And in fact, limited evidence suggests that it may promote overall health um, and better outcomes after a diagnosis of, of breast cancer, with some evidence suggesting that there may be potential for a reduced risk of recurrence. Moderate consumption is one to two servings a day, with up to three servings a day consistently shown as um, being safe. The important then bottom line about soy is it's not essential, but for those who want to include it as a source of protein as they're transitioning to include more plant foods, it is a safe choice. Gluten is another thing that comes up in the news, and for people who have celiac disease or non-celiac gluten sensitivity, it's very important that they avoid gluten. However, that doesn't mean that it's a, an important concern for others. In fact, whole grains, which in our populations generally includes foods containing gluten, if anything, tend to be associated with lower uh, risk of in inflammation. And we do see that whole grains are strongly linked to lower risk of colorectal cancer. Gluten-free foods can have sort of a health halo. Again, very important for people who um, need to avoid gluten, but they're not necessarily healthier. And in fact, some gluten-free foods are highly processed in, in ways that actually make them a less healthful alternative. And what about dairy? Despite all the headlines that you hear, dairy consumption is not, not associated with increased risk of any type of cancer. When it comes to breast cancer, in fact, limited evidence suggests that it may be associated with a decreased risk of premenopausal cancer, and there's some potential for a decrease in postmenopausal breast cancer as well. Evidence is not strong enough yet to make any recommendation about dairy products, and there's no uh, consistent association with, association with protection. However, the evidence is consistent enough to say that um, it does not make any sense to hear these headlines that suggest that they promote cancer risk. So there may be many reasons why people choose to consume or not consume dairy products, but cancer risk would not be one that needs to be considered. These are just a few examples of why it's so important not to make your decisions about lifestyle choices based on single studies that you see in the news look to the uh, a thoughtful, careful analysis of overall research like we find in the AICR expert report and recommendations. When you see hot topics in the news, go to the AICR website, compare these single studies to what the overall evidence body shows as we see in the AICR recommendations. And the AICR website even has a section called Hot Topics where you can get a science-based uh, perspective on some of these things in the news. Mm -hmm.